without SpaceX, which company is best positioned to lead the future of aerospace? While names like Blue Origin or ULA often come up, Rocket Lab is quickly emerging as a serious contender. Its steady progress and recent achievements have even outpaced some of the industry's bigger players, making Blue Origin look slow by comparison. With the upcoming debut of its next-gen rocket Neutron, Rocket Lab is poised to widen that gap. So how is Neutron shaping up, and what makes it a potential game-changer? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Rocket Lab has rapidly risen to become the second most active private space company in the world, surpassed only by SpaceX. Since the debut of its Electron rocket in 2017, the company has successfully launched more than 60 orbital missions, reaching a peak of 14 launches in a single year. This is an impressive feat for a company that entered the space industry after major players like Blue Origin and United Launch Alliance, a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. What makes Rocket Lab's story even more remarkable is that it has achieved this level of success without the backing of a billionaire founder. Unlike its larger competitors, Rocket Lab's growth has been fueled primarily by innovation, efficiency, and a focused business strategy, rather than deep financial resources. In the short term, Rocket Lab plans to continue expanding its capabilities of its Electron rocket, which is already a reliable vehicle for delivering small payloads to orbit. However, the company's long-term vision goes far beyond small satellite launches. It is now developing a much larger and more powerful launch vehicle named Neutron which is expected to play a major role in the medium-lift launch market. If successful, Neutron could dramatically shift the competitive landscape and even challenge the pace of development at Blue Origin. While Jeff Bezos' company has taken over two decades to develop and prepare its new Glenn rocket for launch, Rocket Lab aims to complete Neutron's development in just about five years. That stark contrast highlights Rocket Lab's commitment to fast, efficient engineering, as well as its ambition to move quickly in a highly competitive industry. Neutron's design also sets it apart from other rockets in development today. Standing at 42.8 meters tall, Neutron is relatively short compared to other medium-lift rockets. However, it makes up for this with a wider body, expected to measure between 5 to 7 meters in diameter. This stout, robust form factor is tailored to support large payloads while keeping the overall rocket compact and efficient. One visually distinctive feature of Neutron is its black exterior, a stark contrast to the white or metallic finishes seen on most other rockets. This dark color is part of a deliberate design choice that reflects both function and aesthetics. The rocket's body is made from carbon composite materials, a lightweight yet strong and heat-resistant option that is well-suited for surviving the intense conditions of atmospheric re-entry. Another major innovation lies in Neutron's emphasis on reusability, a principle that has become essential for reducing the cost of space access. Rocket Lab has introduced a groundbreaking feature in the rocket's first stage, a special integrated fairing system known internally as the Hungry Hippo. Unlike traditional rockets, which eject their fairings mid-flight and let them fall into the ocean, Neutron's fairing only partially opens to release the second stage. It remains attached to the rocket and closes again, returning to Earth with the booster. This approach offers multiple advantages. It eliminates the need for separate recovery systems for the fairings, simplifies the overall vehicle design, and avoids damage caused by saltwater exposure. Additionally, this configuration offers better protection for the second stage, ensuring it remains intact and ready for its portion of the mission. For landing, Neutron will use fixed landing legs, referred to as static landing legs. These legs don't fold or retract, which significantly simplifies the rocket's mechanics. By removing moving parts, Rocket Lab reduces the chance of mechanical failure, lowers production complexity, and shortens turnaround time for refurbishment and reuse. To further support a precise landing, the rocket will feature aerodynamic control fins near the upper portion of the booster, just below the fairing. These fins can rotate during descent, helping guide the booster to a safe touchdown. Currently, Neutron is still in the development and production phase, but Rocket Lab expects to roll out the rocket soon in preparation for its first flight. Neutron's second stage introduces yet another unique feature. Instead of being mounted on top of the first stage as in most traditional designs, it is housed within the first stage's fairing like a payload. 
This configuration provides added protection during ascent and allows for a lighter second stage structure. The lighter design, in turn, improves overall flight performance and fuel efficiency, helping the rocket carry heavier payloads farther into space. Altogether, Neutron represents Rocket Lab's bold step into the future of spaceflight by combining efficient design, advanced materials, and a long emphasis on reusability. Rocket Lab is positioning itself as a serious contender in a market long dominated by larger and wealthier players. If Neutron performs as expected, it may not only rival Blue Origin, it could redefine what's possible for new generation rockets. To further enhance the capabilities of Neutron's second stage, Rocket Lab has developed a unique satellite deployment system known as Flatolite. As its name suggests, Flatolite is designed with a flat, compact structure that allows multiple units to be stacked efficiently within the rocket's payload bay. This configuration not only maximizes the number of satellites that can be deployed in a single mission, but also enables quicker, more cost-effective launches for customers looking to build or expand satellite constellations. However, this approach comes with a trade-off. The structural modifications required to support Flatolite reduce the potential for the second stage to be reused. While this prevents Neutron from achieving full reusability at this stage of its evolution, it still demonstrates Rocket Lab's long-term focus on making spaceflight more sustainable and economical. With this partial reusability and its cost-efficient launch strategy, Rocket Lab aims to offer Neutron missions in the price range of 50 to 55 million US dollars, significantly lower than many of its competitors in the medium lift market. Development has been moving swiftly. The second stage has already been produced and successfully passed its qualification tests as of early April, marking a major milestone in the path to flight readiness. At the heart of Neutron's propulsion system is Rocket Lab's custom-designed Archimedes engine. This engine uses a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen, commonly referred to as methalox, a modern and efficient fuel mix favored for its cleaner combustion and compatibility with reusable systems. After extensive evaluation, Rocket Lab settled on an oxygen-rich closed-cycle combustion process for Archimedes. This configuration increases efficiency by redirecting excess gas into the combustion chamber, boosting overall performance. The Archimedes engine is designed to produce 74.8 metric tons or 165,000 pounds of thrust at sea level and up to 90.7 metric tons or 200,000 pounds in the vacuum of space. It'll deliver a specific impulse, or a measure of fuel efficiency, of 329 seconds at sea level and 365 seconds in vacuum conditions. Neutron will be equipped with nine Archimedes engines, resulting in a total liftoff thrust of approximately 673.2 metric tons. While these performance figures may appear modest compared to some larger rockets, they align perfectly with Rocket Lab's mission to keep Neutron simple, efficient, and fast to produce. The use of carbon composite materials throughout the rocket contributes to this simplicity. These materials are not only lightweight and strong, but also heat-resistant and compatible with high-speed manufacturing processes. Rocket Lab plans to use automated systems to produce carbon composite components, potentially creating large rocket sections within minutes, a production speed that could revolutionize the industry. The first Archimedes engine test campaign, conducted in January, delivered highly encouraging results. The engine exceeded expectations by operating at 102% of its rated power, showcasing both the strength of the design and the quality of the engineering team behind it. To complete the Neutron system, Rocket Lab has also developed a vertical landing system for the first stage. Much like SpaceX's Falcon 9, Neutron is designed to return to Earth and land vertically, enabling reusability and rapid turnaround between launches. For recovery, Rocket Lab will utilize a floating offshore platform conceptually similar to SpaceX's drone ships. However, this barge will be customized to accommodate Neutron's structure and landing dynamics. By landing at sea, Rocket Lab can extend the rocket's downrange performance while keeping recovery operations efficient. What's particularly bold is that Rocket Lab plans to attempt this landing maneuver 
on Neutron's very first flight. It's an ambitious move, especially considering the technical challenges involved. For reference, Blue Origin also attempted a drone ship landing with its new Glenn booster on a maiden flight and did not succeed. However, Rocket Lab brings an advantage to the table. It has already conducted multiple splashdown recovery tests with the smaller Electron rocket. These missions have given the company valuable hands-on experience with booster re-entry and retrieval, building a stronger foundation for Neutron's success. Altogether, Rocket Lab's Neutron project reflects a company aiming high and moving fast. From the innovative Flatolite system and advanced Archimedes engines to full carbon composite construction and reusability features, every element of Neutron has been designed with ambition and practicality in mind. While beating SpaceX outright may not be realistic in the short term, Rocket Lab is well positioned to outpace other competitors like Blue Origin in terms of speed, innovation, and cost efficiency. So, do you think Rocket Lab and its Neutron rocket can surpass Blue Origin and New Glenn? Let me know with a yes or a no down below and tell me why. Also, like the video and subscribe to stay updated on Rocket Lab, SpaceX, and the evolving world of space exploration. Anyways, with all preparations underway, Rocket Lab is gearing up for a major leap forward. The company is targeting the second half of this year for Neutron's first launch, now just months away. To meet that goal, Rocket Lab must soon finalize and assemble all major components, especially the distinctive first stage booster. Once the rocket is complete, it will undergo critical tests such as static fire and a wet dress rehearsal. This debut mission will likely fly without a payload, allowing full access on validating Neutron's performance. Its success is crucial, not only to establish Neutron's credibility, but also to pave the way for future contracts and commercial growth. In fact, Rocket Lab has already secured its first Neutron customer, announced at the end of last year. While the client remains undisclosed, the company has committed to two Neutron launches in 2026 and 2027 to serve this partner. These missions will mark Neutron's entry into the competitive commercial launch market. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.